Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this because we've got nothing better to do with our time. So let's go ahead and look at the vehicle we're going to study today, which is this 38,000 mile 2013 Toyota Land Cruiser URJ200. So this is a uh, 200 series Land Cruiser. It is the first year of the facelift, right? The second facelift for the 200 series. And yeah, this thing's got some aftermarket, uh, looks like 18 inch you know, kind of TRD uh, wheels. I'm sure we'll get a better look there. Uh, it's got a nice aftermarket rack, uh, appears to be a Gobi brand. And yeah, pretty clean looking truck in blizzard uh, white pearl. So let's go ahead and yeah, move on through this listing on the right and look at those high level details. So this is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's got 38,000 miles like we mentioned. Uh, it being a 2013, it's going to have a 5.7 liter V8. That's the 3URFE. And, uh, and yeah, it's got a six speed automatic transmission. Uh, that eight speed came in, uh, in 2016 plus. It's got Blizzard Pearl paint and black leather upholstery, 18 inch TRD Pro wheels. And it looks like it's got a, a headlight upgrade and everything else seems yeah, about normal. It looks like it's going to include some yeah, removed parts. So moving over here to the text on the left, uh, we've covered most of this already. The truck spent time in Florida and North Carolina and was acquired by the current owner in September of 2018. So good to see a non-flip. An oil change was completed in March 2023 and the drive belt was replaced in preparation for the sale. Uh, this has got 200,000 miles. It's now offered by the seller on behalf of the owner with manufacturer's literature, service records, a removed set of wills, and an accident-free Carfax report in a clean North Carolina title. So Blizzard Pearl is the 070 color. Uh, it's got fog lights, sunroof, mud flaps, roof spoiler, all the stuff that was like standard for these um, just one thing I'm kind of noting, I'm noting a little bit of a color difference between this rear bumper and the rear quarter panel. So we'll kind of stash that away in the corner of our brains. And yeah, that color doesn't really seem to match um, the like trailer hitch uh, cover. So it could just be the lighting. We'll dig into that, but let's just keep that in mind. Uh, so a Gobi roof rack and ladder were added, and looks like the factory roof rack will accompany the truck. Uh, the seller notes the rear bumper cover was repainted. Nailed it. <laughs> Flaws such as paint chips on the hood and bumper covers and scratches on the left front door, left front door, the driver door, lower tailgate, and rear spoiler are shown in the gallery. So it doesn't look like they're you know hiding away from yeah from anything being disclosed here at least as far as they know. Uh, so it's fitted with just regular highway tires on those 18 inch wheels and the 28560 size. So it's a little, little bit bigger than the stock. I think the stock's what, 275 or 26570? Um, or maybe on the 18 inch, yeah, it's anyway, whatever, you can look it up. <laughs> I don't know everything. The remove wheels are included in the cell. Uh, so those will be kind of like the chrome. Um, I think they're, I wanna say like eight spoke, but I could be wrong. Uh, stopping power is handled by four wheel disc brakes. All right, so in the interior, the only thing that's kind of, I think, worth mentioning, well, maybe two things, is that, yeah, it includes a center console cooler box and a navigation system, and looks like there is a rear seat entertainment system as well that is included, and it looks like headphones and a remote are, um, are included. The left front door pull is scratched. We see that where, yeah, at least the color wears off. This little plastic piece, it can be replaced, so, yeah, yeah get it while you can. Uh, so yeah, we've got 18,000 miles being added on this thing over the last, what, five years. So yeah, pretty low usage, um, great mileage. This should, yeah, should, assuming everything else is clean, should fetch some pretty, pretty good coin here. Uh, we've talked about the oil change and the drive belt. Yeah. Looking at the undercarriage doesn't seem too scary. So that's good. And yeah, everything else is standard there. So let's go ahead and yeah, just look at this note the notes here below this Carfax thing, and then we'll get into the Carfax. So the Carfax report shows no accidents or other damage history, enlist history in Florida and North Carolina, so that's a good thing. And there's currently a lien on the truck, and the seller's lender will need to be paid off before the title can be transferred to the new owner. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to have to jump through yeah, those hoops if you purchase this.
Uh, we're just going to look real quick at the Carfax report, make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary here. Originally, it looks like it was sold into maybe perhaps, yeah, maybe Florida, and then and then it went to North Carolina, and then it stayed in North Carolina for yeah most of the time is kind of what I'm gathering for this. Um, just maybe it initially sold uh, and operated there out of Florida. Uh, but good service records. Looks like it was done at Toyota dealer, so you should be able to pull this up into um, yeah, great service records. Uh, things being done, you know, ahead of time again because of the age, not because of the mileage. Um, so yeah, anyway, you should be able to pull this up in Toyota Service History website and yeah, have those records for your own. In addition to them being on the Carfax report. Nothing really comes up in Google for this. And then similarly, we get just a, unfortunately, we don't see a price for what this was at in 2018. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's going to sell <laughs> for more than it was sold for in 2018. So good uh, investment by the owner. There are a couple of videos. So please be sure to check those out, especially if you're interested in uh, purchasing this. Um, I don't think we necessarily get the kind of detail um, that yeah the photos provide, but listening to the engine start, looking for smoke, uh, looking for excessive uh, you know wobble on the engine, those are things you should be looking for. Um, but this one yeah checks out in those regards. So let's go ahead and look at the photos. Let me kind of zoom out here and then zoom in for your viewing pleasure. And yeah, let's get started. So yeah, great looking truck from the outset. It's got the factory running boards on here. So really the only aftermarket thing that I'm seeing here from the, yeah, from this angle are the wheels and the roof rack. So the roof rack is kind of like an expedition style roof rack. Yeah, I understand it's probably not everybody's taste. Um, front of the vehicle looks great. Uh, very minimal haze on the on the headlights. I will also mention, we've talked about this in previous videos, the headlights are designed in such a way that most of the UV, most of the sun damage happens on this upper edge. Um, that was something that Toyota, between the, the way the 200 series looked from 2008 through 2011, uh, they really accentu accentuated that, excuse me, and yeah, really made it kind of like a shelf on the top of these headlights compared to the um, yeah the 2008 and and then again they changed it and kind of made it more flat for the 2016 plus. I'm curious if the formulation will have changed because I've seen these headlights in addition to the yeah 2008 through 2011 yeah, fade out and you know get damaged with oxidation. But everything's looking pretty good here at the on the front of the vehicle. Um, yeah, nothing really to write home about there. Looks, looks good and clean. Moving around here to the back. Uh, while I appreciate Gobi making it known that these feet and the rack are manufactured by them, uh, I would presume that these are made out of steel and the powder coat will eventually fail at all of those corners and nooks and crannies. And you'll end up with a yeah, nice rust residue, depending on where this vehicle is operated. Um, again, I appreciate them yeah, wanting to get the, the brand name on it, but yeah, I'd suggest long, long term, perhaps that might be a better, um, better use and it'd probably simplify things, but you know, it wouldn't look as cool. That's for sure. But yeah, that, that ladder yeah, could be helpful in yeah, the event you have like a rooftop 10 or if you're loading stuff up there. Um, but yeah, they certainly didn't get the color right on this rear bumper. It's kind of a shame, kind of sticks out, um, yeah, quite a bit. Uh, let's see, looking here at the back, everything seems in order. The gaps all look good. The lights look good. This, I don't know. I Sometimes I get thinking that the 2016 plus lights are better. I I like the style of lights. I like the round. It's kind of like a throwback to the old like Alteza style. Uh, anyway, looks like all the tail lights work. Anyway, uh, moving along to the passenger side, it feels like the color's a little bit better on the passenger side. So... Yeah, not quite sure what, what happened there. If it was just that corner and they kind of faded it across the middle um, because it seems to be a better match on this um, yeah this passenger side. All right, working around uh, yeah, a little bit more here on the passenger side. Nothing really jumping out at me. It looks good. It's got the little kind of mini front mud flaps. And yeah, what a great side profile. Great front end. Looks beautiful. All right, moving back to the front. Uh, yeah, it looks, looks good here. There, there's like a leaf underneath. Not sure if that's like kind of pegged in the, in the grill somewhere. Uh, looking here at the driver's side, that looks great as well. Sl a slight color difference on this front bumper. Makes me think that perhaps that was touched up at some point in the, in the past as well. But yeah, good looking, good looking truck. Doesn't look like too many headaches. And yeah, that repaint 
you know, of the rear bumper. Well, they're not perfect. Um, like it's probably better than the scratches that were there before. But yeah, that's, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's really jarring looking at the color. It's yeah, definitely not a good match. Uh, the good news is, yeah, you could get that, you know, repainted and matched a little bit better. Nice uh, view looking here at the headlights and fog lights. Those all seem to work. Yeah, it's a good good looking design. The the headlights here for the 2013 through 15, yeah, they kind of, I've, I've started to like them a little bit more. I think, I still overall think the yeah, 2008 through 2011 headlights are, yeah, are a little bit better. But yeah, these, these tail lights, they're the shit. <laughs> they look so good. Looks like all the lights work there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the windshield looks good, at least from this uh, distance. Can't see any chips or cracks. And we'll probably go through all the glass here. You could, you know, zoom in and try and yeah, find the etchings. I mean, it looks like they're all there. Um, yep. Looking good. Yeah. Mirror caps from both sides. Those look great. Yeah, nothing really uh, out of place here. This looks looks fantastic. Uh, coming back to this photo here of the uh, the fuel filler, uh, just don't forget the opportunity to look into the wheel well. It's kind of hard because you know this little bottom piece of the rocket here that's plastic. So, yeah, you don't really get to see, you know, maybe what's going on underneath. But um, yeah, it looks good. And then here's just some detail shots of just some of the imperfections. Yeah, this stuff seems to be yeah pretty minor, but good on them for disclosing it anyway. All right, looking at the wheels here, don't miss the opportunity to look behind at the wheel well. That frame looks just fine. Um, yeah, the tires look great. Um, yeah, a lot of, not a lot of people, but some people, yeah, they take these wheels and they, yeah, they'll, you know, kind of powder coat them or paint them in bronze to make them look like the heritage wheels. I don't think there's really that much, yeah, difference between them, but yeah, it could improve the look if that's your thing. Yeah, all those wheels and tires, yeah, those all look good, and the frame behind it, yeah, looks good as well. All right, moving here to the interior, uh, driver door panel looks good. Not quite sure where the scratch is that they're mentioning. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a detailed photo, but uh, yeah, even the, the carpet here in this part of the cockpit that we can see, you know, the driver's area, that looks really good. Yeah, and sure enough, there's the photo. Yeah, super minor scratch there. I'd much rather have the scratch than yeah all of this uh, the silver paint being worn off like it's the case for most of these. Uh, so that's yeah pretty minor. Uh, door jam here looks good. Weather stripping seems to be in place. Uh, let's see the uh, some sort of film installed by Southeast Toyota. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's a nice touch. And then, yeah, it looks like there's, I don't know, some of this stuff like this lifetime trust, I believe some dealers install, uh, you know, whether it's GPS or other like satellite or other kind of like alarm system trackers. I'd assume that's what that sticker's for. And yeah, it looks like there's a payload modification uh, sticker in there. But yeah, driver's seat looks very, very nice. Commensurate for, yeah, 38,000 miles. Uh, yeah, that looks really good. Carpet looks clean. Those original floor mats look great as well. Yeah, it kind of makes you want a new new car, doesn't it? Uh, passenger seat looks good. Maybe a little bit of kind of like oxidation on the seatbelt receptacle there. Uh, carpet looks good. Floor mat looks good. Door jam and the label looks good. Uh, the driver or the passenger door itself looks great as well. No signs of yeah wear or use there. Steering wheel looks fantastic. The normal fading that we see sometimes on the, you know, in this wood on the wheel, that has not happened. And then from what I can see of the shifter handle, that also looks good as well. Uh, yeah, so there's a photo, 37,823 miles. Uh, photos taken with the engine running uh, at a, you know, kind of like an idle, normal, you know, warm temperature. Everything looks good there. Uh, oil pressure looks good as well. These are great photos too. Um, yeah, appreciate the uh, you know, the detail and the clarity. And pretty good lighting too. Yeah, cycling through here, looking at the dash, the center stack, that all looks great. No scratches, nothing really jumping out at me. 
the controls down to the lower part, those all look good as well. Uh, cup holders seem to be yeah, functioning. And then probably what most people use their center, their cooling center console for is just regular <laughs> storage. So it looks like there's some, I don't know, some cables of some sort in there <laughs> instead of drinks. Uh, passenger side of the dash looks clean. Uh, glove box looks good. Rear uh, driver's side door looks good. No signs of paintless dent repair on any of the doors so far. Uh, nets look good as well on the back of the seats. Everything appears yeah, very mint. This is, uh, yeah, if you like 2013 and yeah, you've got a little bit of money. A little bit of a yeah, paint defect there in this, uh, what, passenger side door jam. Um, yeah, a little, little curious. Uh, it was funny, I was looking at a, yeah, a 2022 or whatever, like Chevy Bolt EUV, uh, this was a couple months ago, and in the door jam, it was a little bit further up, you know, it's kind of like at like hip level for most people, there was like some fabric that had been like blasted into the paint, and I just thought to myself, <laughs> if, if that made it out of the factory uh, from a, you know, a, a plant in Japan for a Toyota. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that would be an anomaly for sure. But yeah, I'm sure it's pretty commonplace with other, other brands. Uh, floor looks pretty good. There's a little, you know, a little dirt staining there that might vacuum up, you know, reasonably well. Um, yeah, looks, looks really clean in there. Very impressed with the condition of this one. Uh, you know, so maybe, maybe some staining here. Uh, it could just be the camera and the ISO settings as well. Uh, unfortunately, it does like most of these. It does have this rear seat entertainment system. It's it's antiquated and outdated, but that's all right. Uh, third row is in place. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely digging the black and the gray interior. I there's kind of like a what a more gray uh, interior for these early years. And yeah, I like the I like these black seats. That looks good. A little bit of scuffing here on the bottom of the uh, the passenger side seat, but other than that, this looks looks pretty mint. Looks pretty good. Yeah, fantastic presentation. You can see how this uh, Gobi ladder mounts at least a little bit. I'm not sure if it's like a pinch thing or if it kind of drills into this. Um, I'm sure you could yeah, find some instructions online about how that's done. All right, moving to the engine bay. That looks clean. Uh, it was less of an issue for um, these later years, but yeah, definitely just keep an eye on the radiator. I think the normal leaks, such as like the valley plate, coolant leak, that all can still present itself. But this engine bay looks fantastic. Uh, just one little missing, you know, clip there that holds that in. Um, that's not a big deal, though. Just a little bit, of, little bit of dirt. But otherwise, the engine bay looks, yeah, very clean, very orderly, very well taken care of. Uh, moving to the undercarriage now. Uh, frame looks good, just a little, yeah, super, very, very minor rust along the, the welds. I've seen that the 200 series seems to prefer to rust along these welds. I haven't seen a, a frame that's like totally roached yet on the 200 series. I'm sure they're out there, but I haven't just haven't seen them. But the ones like around Utah, kind of like these, you know, so-so states for corrosion. Yeah, the rust definitely starts on those welds. Uh, and it looks to, you know, seems like it's starting here. You can see in this photo here of this, uh, what, lower control arm mount kind of towards the rear. As you would expect the corrosion to get worse, you know, it is a little bit worse, but this is, yeah, super minor. Uh, yeah, there's that leaf we were talking about earlier, just hanging down. Uh, undercarriage, you know, these skid plates, that all seems dry and orderly. And... Yeah, I'm curious if this looks to be the factory wheel, right? So they mentioned that there would be some original wheels that were included in the cell. That appears to be uh, one of those factory original wheels. But the undercarriage looks fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't offer like a you know stamp of approval, but you know besides the yeah that paint on that rear bumper, the sinks yeah pretty pretty damn close to perfect. Again, as it should be for the for the mileage. So yeah, there's the original, sorry, eight spoke or whatever. What was I talking about? Five spoke. I should have known that. They're all, <laughs> I think they're all five spoke. Anyway, there's your factory roof rack and yeah, we're back out. So yeah, good looking truck. Uh, we, we talk about how for pricing on these and, you know, kind of what to think of. Uh, we draw that line in the sand for 2016 plus being at about $50,000. Uh, so this being, you know, older than that would drive the price down, but the mileage is phenomenal. So I think that, you know, brings it up and makes up for it being just a couple years older and not having that facelift. So I, 
yeah, my guess it's currently, and we didn't cover this before, but this is currently bid up to thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. It's got four days left. Yeah, there's a good chance this will go into the uh, into the fifties. I'm kind of like hoping that it stays in the forties. That would that would feel I think pretty good. But yeah, I think I'm gonna throw fifty-two out there. That feels like a yeah pretty reasonable price for such low mileage. Um, but yeah, there are, you know, there are some 2016 pluses, you know, 2016, 2017 that have, uh, you know, more mileage, right? 70, 80,000 miles, but you know, they're going for that 50,000 mark. So I think that's, you know, just kind of what the market would be. So anyway, that's my, that's my thought. It seems like a good truck. Um, yeah, not, not too many, uh, beefs with it. And yeah, it's nice to see all the original equipment included, which yeah, for those purists, yeah, I think they'll appreciate that. So all right. Well, there you go. That's this one. Appreciate you taking the time to check out this video and my channel, and I hope you have a terrific day. Please take care of yourself.